My name is Arvind Krishnan and I'm a simulation specialist at Go Engineer. This is the second part of a series of videos on some of the advanced functionalities in SOLIDWORKS simulation. In the last video, we looked at the force control method and some of the introductory advanced options in SOLIDWORKS simulation. We applied a force of 400 newtons, which was linearly incremented and we got some results for this cantilever beam. The displacement that we saw was 21.3 millimeters and the displacement only in the z direction was about 21.25. Now there would be some cases where you know the amount of displacement that needs to be applied and want to know what is the amount of load that's needed to apply that displacement. To do that we can create another nonlinear analysis and this time we use a displacement control. I'm going to duplicate the study. I'm going to call it displacement control. This, the setup of the study is going to be mostly similar other than a couple of subtle changes. I'm going to change the amount of force applied to just one Newton and as before it's going to ramp up from 0 to 1 in the one second pseudo time that's applied. The only other thing that changes in the analysis itself is in the properties of the study. I'm going to go to the advanced options and I'm going to switch from a force control method to a displacement control method. In this method, the amount of displacement at a particular point, which we're going to specify now, I'm going to pick the end of the cantilever beam, which is expected to undergo maximum di displacement. And I'm going to select the Z axis because that's the direction of the displacement. Here once I hit the edit button I can specify the curve and how my displacement changes so at one second I want a displacement of 21.25 uh, millimeters in the positive Z direction which is downwards in this case and I hit OK so the increments of the displacement in this graph is what governs the different time steps once again the same time increment is what defines how the study progresses from one time step to the other. The study is now ready to run. I'm going to hit the run button. As can be seen, we are right now at time step one and we slowly progress. You can see intermediate results as well. The one thing that should be noted is now when it says 7%, it's at 7% of the entire 21 millimeter deformation that we suggested. It's been a minute and 40 seconds and we are right now at the last titration, 100% of the displacement and that completes the study. As expected, the displacement is about 21.5 millimeters and the Z direction displacement is about 21.35. The one main output that most people would be interested in when doing a displacement control is what was the amount of loading? and for this we get a load factor output which is a load multiplication of the initial force that was applied. I'm going to create a time history plot and the first node is going to default to that node or you can create a sensor to predefine loads. We're going to select that Z displacement and the, the Y axis would be the load factor. So what this graph shows us is that as our displacement, which is the x-axis, goes from zero to the entire amount of about 21.25, the load factor is at 403. Once again, 403 times the force that was initially applied is going to be the amount of load that we need to get a displacement of 21.25. Comparing these results with the force control, we see that we applied a force of 400 newtons to get a displacement of about 21.25. So the two studies are in agreement with each other. So in this video, we saw how a displacement control can be used to run a nonlinear analysis. In the next set of videos, we look at some material models that a user would have access to in a nonlinear analysis. Once again, this is Arvind Krishnan and Co-Engineer.